They're like nine foot, ten foot tall. They look like aliens to us. Big eyes, they have big eyes. Throughout history, humans have gazed up at the stars and wondered if they were the only species in the wide cosmos. Our deep desire to connect with other beings and discover our place in the cosmos stems from this intense curiosity. In recent times, the subject of UFOs has been predominantly linked to speculation, conspiracy theories, and science fiction. However, credible and serious people have started to tackle the issue with a more academic tone recently. Currently, there is a video going around showing an inanimate object blinking and making a brief appearance. Consistent with the caller's earlier description, the video showed a unique shape with two big eyes. Could there be other civilizations nearby? What's the shocking story behind this meeting with a non-human creature? Join us as we explore the clearest footage of the entity that landed in Vegas and why it's so mysterious. A Las Vegas area family claimed that they saw non-human creatures on May 1st after a mysterious crash in their backyard following a green flash in the sky. The family quickly dialed 911 and the police arrived on the scene to conduct an investigation. The family told the dispatcher that large creatures were in his backyard. They're not human. 100% they're not human, the caller told the 911 dispatcher in an audio recording. I swear to God it's not a joke, it's actually real. We just see in the corner of our eye something fall down from the sky, and it was with lights. And when it hit down, there was like a big impact, and we felt like an energy. And then we hear a lot of footsteps near us. And then we have like big, big equipment, and we see there's a, there's like an eight foot person beside it, and another one's inside, and it has big eyes and it's looking at us, the caller added. A tall, skinny alien creature with greenish color? I looked at it in the eyes and my body just froze like having sleep paralysis, a witness said. He had a weird looking face, big feet and big shiny eyes and a big mouth. The Las Vegas Police Department, meantime, had just made public body camera footage showing what appears to be an object gliding low over the sky. And one of the officers has confirmed what the witness said saying that their colleague had observed something falling from the sky. At least 21 people across Eastern California, Arizona, Nevada and Utah reported seeing the glowing green light. However, Las Vegas police did not find anything after searching the family's backyard and the case was closed. Is it merely a coincidence that this occurred after a former intelligence official had gone public with allegations that the United States government possesses alien vehicles that are intact and partially intact? A former intelligence official who went public has provided Congress and the Intelligence Community Inspector General with secret information regarding clandestine projects that, according to him, have recovered whole or partially whole extraterrestrial ships. He claims Congress has been unlawfully kept in the dark about the information and that he was the victim of illegal reprisal because he disclosed classified material. On and off the record, other intelligence officers have offered comparable, verifying information. These officials include both active and retired individuals who have worked in different agencies and are familiar with these activities. The whistleblower, 36-year-old David Charles Grush, is a decorated former combat officer in Afghanistan and a veteran of the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, NGA, and the National Reconnaissance Office, NRO. Grush represented the NRO to the Unidentified Aerial Phenomena Task Force from 2019 to 2021, and the NGA to the task force from late 2021 to July 2022. Once headed by the Department of the Navy under the Office of the Undersecretary of Defense for Intelligence and Security, the task force was reorganized and expanded into the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office to include investigations of objects operating underwater. The official name of the phenomenon now being studied is Unidentified Anomalous Phenomena, or UAP. Objects retrieved have been identified as being of exotic origin, non-human intelligence, whether extraterrestrial or unknown origin, based on the vehicle morphologies and material science testing 
and the possession of unique atomic arrangements and radiological signatures, according to Grush, who stated that the government, its allies and defence contractors have been making recoveries of whole vehicles and partial fragments for decades. An attorney who was the first Intelligence Community Inspector General, ICG, is representing Grush in the complaint filing process. In compliance with procedures, Grush communicated his intended disclosure to the Defence Office of Prepublication and Security Review within the Department of Defence. Under new safeguards, included in the most recent defence appropriations, Bill Grush's disclosures, along with those of non-public witnesses, indicate a growing resolve on the part of some in the government to solve a monumental mystery with national security implications that has plagued the military and captivated the public since at least World War II. For decades, the Air Force engaged in a propaganda campaign to debunk sighting reports of unexplained objects. Now that two public hearings and numerous classified briefings have been carried out, Congress is demanding answers. US intelligence community veteran Christopher Mellon has collaborated with lawmakers on UAP investigations for many years. Mellon previously held the position of Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Intelligence and spent nearly 20 years in the field. A number of well-placed current and former officials have shared detailed information with me regarding this alleged program, including insights into the history, governing documents, and the location where a craft was allegedly abandoned and recovered, Mellon said. However, it is a delicate matter getting this potentially explosive information into the right hands for validation. This is made harder by the fact that, rightly or wrongly, a number of potential sources do not trust the leadership of the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office established by Congress. However, there are currently some insiders who are prepared to come forward for the first time knowing about these recovery programs, even if it is risky. Jonathan Gray is a current employee of the National Air and Space Intelligence Center where he specializes in unmanned aerial vehicle analysis. Prior to this, he served on special directive task forces for the Department of Defense and Private Aerospace. He has a secret clearance and has been an officer of the United States intelligence community for generations. According to Gray, the non-human intelligence phenomenon is real. We are not alone. He went on to say that retrievals like these happen all over the world and that no one country has been able to find a solution to it. Before joining the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, Grush held the positions of Senior Intelligence Capabilities Integration Officer, Senior Technical Advisor for Unidentified Aerial Phenomena Analysis slash Transmedium Issues, and Senior Intelligence Officer at the National Reconnaissance Office. From 2016 to 2021, he was a GS-15 civilian, the military equivalent of a colonel, and led the production of the NRO Director's Daily Briefing. Grush has served as an intelligence officer for over 14 years. He is a decorated Air Force veteran who has participated in clandestine operations to strengthen American security and has received multiple accolades and decorations for his service. According to a 2021 NRO performance report, Grush was an intelligence strategist with multiple responsibilities who analyzed unidentified aerial phenomena reports and boosted congressional leadership intel gaps in understanding. He was assessed by the Reconnaissance Officer's Operations Center Deputy Director as an adept staff officer strategist and total force integrator with innovative solutions and actionable results. Grush prepared many briefs on unidentified aerial phenomena for Congress while in government and helped draft the language on UAP for the FY 2023 National Defense Authorization Act, spearheaded by Senators Kirsten Gillibrand and Marco Rubio, and signed into law by President Biden in December 2022. The provision states that any person with relevant UAP information can inform Congress without retaliation, regardless of any previous non-disclosure agreements. When asked about UFO legacy programs, Grush said that they had been hidden for a long time inside multiple agencies nesting UAP activities in conventional secret access programs without appropriate reporting to various oversight authorities. 
He said he reported to Congress on the existence of a decades-long, publicly unknown Cold War for recovered and exploited physical material, a competition with near-peer adversaries over the years to identify UAP crashes, landings, and retrieve the material for exploitation or reverse engineering to garner asymmetric national defense advantages. In 2022, Grush sent hundreds of pages of classified audio recordings to Congress, which included details regarding the materials recovery program. However, no physical wreckage or non-human item materials had been sent to Congress. According to Grush, who claims that the operation was unlawfully shielded from appropriate congressional oversight and that he was harassed and targeted as a result of his investigation, his investigation revolved around lengthy interviews with high-level intelligence officials, some of whom were directly involved with the program. The craft recovery activities, according to Grush, are continuing at different levels of activity, and he is familiar with the particular persons involved, both present and former. Individuals on these UAP programs approached me in my official capacity and disclosed their concerns regarding a multitude of wrongdoings, such as illegal contracting against the federal acquisition regulations and other criminality and the suppression of information across a qualified industrial base in academia, he stated. The associates who testified on Grush's behalf stated that the information he provided was very sensitive and it showed that highly secret black programs have materials of non-human origin. The details regarding the locations and names of these programs are classified, but the Inspector General and Intelligence Committee staff were given this information. Several current members of the recovery program confirmed the information that Grush had given for the classified complaint by speaking with the Inspector General's office. Grush resigned from his position on April 7, 2023 with the stated goal of increasing public knowledge of government responsibility. He maintains strong support inside intelligence circles and has received credible endorsements from multiple sources. His assertion concerning the existence of a terrestrial arms race occurring sub rosa over the past 80 years focused on reverse engineering technologies of unknown origin is fundamentally correct, as is the indisputable realization that at least some of these technologies of unknown origin derive from non-human intelligence," said Carl Nell, the retired army colonel who worked with Grush on the UAP task force. Representing Grush is Charles McCullough III, a senior partner at the Washington DC-based Compass Rose Legal Group. McCullough was previously confirmed by the United States Senate to serve as the intelligence community's inspector general in 2011. In that role, he reported directly to James R. Clapper, the then Director of National Intelligence, and oversaw intelligence officers tasked with conducting audits, inspections, and investigations. In May 2022, McCullough filed a disclosure of urgent concerns, complaint of reprisal on behalf of Grush with the ICIG about detailed information that Grush had gathered beginning in 2019 while working for the UAP task force. An unclassified version of the complaint provided to us states that Grush has direct knowledge that UAP-related classified information has been withheld and or concealed from Congress by elements of the intelligence community to purposely and intentionally thwart legitimate congressional oversight of the UAP program. All testimony Grush provided for the classified complaint was provided under oath. According to the unclassified complaint in July 2021, Grush had confidentially provided classified information to the Department of Defense Inspector General concerning the withholding of UAP-related information from Congress. He believed that his identity and the fact that he had provided testimony were disclosed to individuals and or entities within the Department of Defense and the intelligence community outside the IG's office. He did not allege that this information was improperly disclosed by any member of that office. After months of reprisals and retribution stemming from these disclosures starting in 2021, Grush requested that the specifics of these reprisals be kept secret in order to preserve the credibility of the continuing probe. After his credible and urgent complaint was reviewed by the Intelligence Community Inspector General 
In July 2022, a summary was promptly sent to Avril Haines, the Director of National Intelligence, the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence and the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence, according to Grush. The complaint was drafted and signed by McCullough and his managing partner. It ended with Grush's signature attached to his statement that, I do solemnly affirm under the penalties of perjury that the contents of the foregoing paper are true and correct to the best of my knowledge. Grush started communicating with the Intelligence Committee staff in private, closed sessions after a whistleblower reprisal investigation was initiated. He claimed that congressional staffers lacked the proper clearances and investigative authority to see some of the material he uncovered in his investigation. The members of the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence are not authorised to discuss the specifics of a complaint or verify its source. When you have multiple agencies nesting UAP activities in conventional SAP CAP programs, both as recipients of exploitation-related insights and for operational reasons, without appropriate reporting to various oversight authorities, you have a problem, Grush said, referencing the highly secret special access programs and controlled access programs. Grush's willingness to take risks and speak out appears to be emboldening others with similar knowledge who believe in greater transparency. Jonathan Gray, the intelligence officer specialising in UAP analysis at the National Air and Space Intelligence Centre, is speaking publicly for the first time, identified here under the identity he uses inside the agency. In order to discover and characterise air, space, missile and cyber threats, the Department of Defence relies on NASIC, which is primarily housed at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. The Centre's team of trusted subject matter experts provides unique collection, exploitation and analytic capabilities that are not found elsewhere. According to Gray, these enormous powers are not limited to the study of everyday life. Rather, they are part of a much larger historical program that began in the early 20th century and involved the coordinated retrieval and study of exotic materials. While most of these materials had a mundane terrestrial origin and explanation, there are some exceptions, and any percentage greater than zero in this group represents an indisputable statistical fact. Given the Air Force's relative silence on UAP, the testimony of an Air Force insider is highly remarkable. Different agencies have used a plethora of our most advanced sensors, including platforms in space, at least three times, to study and positively identify the extraterrestrial origin, performance and design of these strange machines. Mellon has been instrumental in arranging classified briefings for members of Congress and other officials about UAP, which include references to exotic retrieved materials. The first briefing he facilitated on retrievals of unexplained objects was provided to staff members of the Senate Armed Services Committee on October 21, 2019, and to staff members of the Senate Intelligence Committee two days later. Mellon claims that lawmakers may swiftly ascertain the truth if they so desire if they become more cognizant of the data sent to their staff and the Inspector General. This is an unprecedented oversight challenge for the committees, but I believe we have leaders in Congress who are up to the task, Mellon said. Classified briefings are frequently shared with Jonathan Gray and his team at NASIC. High-level classified briefing materials exist in which real-world scenarios involving UAP, as evidenced by historical examples, are made available to intelligence personnel on a need-to-know basis, he told us. I have been the recipient of such briefings for almost a decade. Under the National Defence Authorization Act for FY 2023, the Director of National Intelligence and the Secretary of Defence were given the responsibility of creating a new system that would allow authorised individuals to securely report sensitive material to defence channels. The law also requires disclosure of material retrieval, material analysis, reverse engineering, research and development pertaining to unexplained anomalous occurrences both recently and in the past. Dr Gary Nolan, a distinguished inventor and entrepreneur with over 300 publications to his name, has launched more than six businesses using technologies developed in his lab. 
Some of these technologies have been used to analyze exotic materials, and Nolan published the first peer-reviewed paper to do so. A grain of silicon or germanium, according to Nolan, utterly transformed human civilization by providing the foundation for integrated circuits, which in turn support computers and, more recently, artificial intelligence. What might be represented here could be hundreds of technological revolutions ahead of us. It could be more transformative for humanity than what the microprocessor accomplished. Imagine what we could do with even a grain of knowledge about how they operate. He went on to say that studying even small samples of purported anomalous material could lead to benefits for humanity that are currently inconceivable. The case of David Grush marks a crucial test of these new whistleblower protections and their ability to protect future whistleblowers who decide to come forward. Secrets have always been necessary, according to Jonathan Gray. It's a tough nut to crack, but any sufficiently advanced nation can use non-human intelligence or UAP retrievals to gain technological advantages in asymmetrical warfare. Consequently, some secrets will remain, but it's no longer necessary to deny the existence of these advanced technologies or that they have landed, crashed or fallen into human hands. But did the United States coerce the other countries into keeping this secret for almost a hundred years? Is that even possible? The continued secrecy of this 80-year arms race, according to Grush, is harmful because it prevents the global population from being ready for an unforeseen scenario involving non-human intelligence contact. Do you think he could be right? Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.